No doubt, over the years, many of you would have been involved with and taken part in school, college or university sports or athletic days. Now, here in the UK, two of the common events are how far can you throw a cricket ball and how far can you put a shot? And so somebody's going to win this event, but you've got to consider, are they winning the event by narrow margin? Uh, not because of their athletic prowess, but simply because the size, weight and fit of the ball in their hand is more perfect than the other competitors. And so simply to try and throw this, it's quite a weight, it's quite large and it's an awkward fit in your hand where if you switch to these other balls, they're a nicer fit. This one's probably a little bit too small. The tennis ball is probably a little slightly too big and light. But this pool ball is probably going to be perfect for my size and weight to get the furthest distance. Now, this is also something you have to take into consideration with your air rifle, whether it's uh, spring powered, pump up pneumatic, or pre charged pneumatic. The size, weight and fit of the pellet can have a great effect on the performance of your air rifle and also particularly with the fit in the barrel accuracy. So here are some simple tests that I did recently and hopefully you'll find these of some uh, interest. Now the air rifle used has got one of our regulators fitted and it was set up to use the Air Arms Diabolo Field which I've got down as being about 16.1 grains and with these we'd set it up to be about 11.6 foot pounds and with this we were getting roughly about 85 shots although the regulator kicked out at probably the high 70s but then you get a very slow drop off so we'll use that as the control so from this using the same rifle without altering the settings we fired through it uh, a selection of other weights and sizes of pellets the heaviest being the 32 uh, grain challenger orient express and the lightest being the crossman domed or crossman acupel at 14.3 grains now, with the first two pellets, these very heavy weight ones, as you'll see, 32 grains and 30 grains, both of these were a no throw and they had to be downsized until they were a nice and good fit in the barrel for us to get a, a good and consistent reading. Now, even with this, the heaviest pellet was only doing 7.64 foot pounds on average. Uh, the Ely Magnum was doing 8.36, slightly better. Uh, there is a two grain weight difference. The Bisley Magnum, uh, although it was actually a good fit in the barrel, was quite a poor performer at only 8.07 foot pounds. Where the Bisley Premier was actually slightly better than the, the, the pellets the gun set up for and the control pellet. These were given 11.62. Uh, foot pounds so very slightly better now oh I must apologize as well this obviously isn't an air arms Diablo field but we thought we got a new tin used a complete tin up testing only to find that we hadn't and so that is a combination of many shots through the chrono now here's the JSB Predator with a little plastic uh, nose cone in I must say a pellet that I wouldn't actually use myself but some people might like it and that was doing 9.6 foot pounds the field target trophy was doing 11.06 and they're 15.55 grains roughly now here's two interesting pellets and they're very interesting because they're roughly exactly the same weight and the same design and manufactured by the same people we've got the Ely Wasp 5.5 and the Ely Wasp 5.6 and I say exactly the same weight there is a slight difference between them uh, one's registered down as 14.6 grains and the other 14.65 grains but you'll see here that there's virtually a two foot pound uh, difference in the power output now I must say that the Ely Wasp 5.6 was what could only be described as an excessively tight fit in the barrel and it was a real click 
uh, to get it in and this is obviously reflected in the uh, power output. The RWS Superdome 14.5 grains was 10.62 and the Crossman Domes or Acupel as we call them in the UK 14.3 grains and 10.46 foot pounds. So here there's quite a, a range of weights and fits. So if you were going to go on the pellet weight and the pellet fit in comparison to uh, looking at the, the out output, obviously the two heavy pellets are far too heavy, even when sized down to be a good fit. The Bisley Magnum was uh, better on weight I feel but without being sized it was still quite a tight fit uh, in the barrel and I think it was at, at the choke end particularly. The Bisley Premier was nice to load obviously the Air Arms Diablo field was a nice fit that went in the rifling marks when we looked at it were very good. Uh, the JSB Predator is you know not far off the same same weight but performed a lot uh, you know a lot less. Uh, this was because this pellet was a very very loose fit in the barrel indeed there was no uh, real friction there whatsoever uh, and then we go up to the field target trophy which are the pellets I use mainly in my own rifle they were quite good uh, but as we've already said these Ely Wasp you know it, I think the problem with those was mainly uh, the fit in the barrel they were both tight fit but the 5.6 was just you know, you've got to push it in to believe it. Uh, and I was actually quite uh, disappointed with the uh, RWS Superdome and the Crossman Domes. I think this two grain uh, sort of difference in weight compared to the Premier and the uh, Air Arms is, is the main factor for them having a, a less power output. As you can see, they're both about the same. But one's 14.5 grains and one's 14.3 and one's doing 10.62 and the other one's doing 10.46 so if you look at the the weight comparison and the power power comparison in comparison to the uh, Bisley Premier and the Air Arms Diablo field you can see that there's a comparable uh, power loss due to weight so both of these pellets are actually a nice fit in the barrel and I think there's been quite a drop off uh, due to the two grain weight difference. So when you're chronographing your gun and looking for the best pellet for you if you're going to try and get the most number of shots then this would be very important to do this. If you're not bothered about the number of shots say for instance you're uh, shooting rats but you know you like to shoot quite precisely because a rat's a small target and it might be uh, dobbing about up on the rafters then you know the Bisley, the Bisley Magnum you can obviously screw the power up so that it's you know near your power limit but you're going to get a lot less shots so let's have a quick look at the number of shots with the air arms down below field uh, we were getting about, about 85 shots, that's not 85 regulated shots, that's 85 good usable shots. So the regulator was stopping working at about 76ish, but then there's a slow drop off. Uh, we then did the same tests using the Bisley Magnum, the Ely uh, Wasp and the Crossman Domes or Crossman Acupel as we know them as. And as you can see, there is a considerable uh, difference between one and the other. So I mean that's 54, 64, 74, 84. That's you know what's that about one and a half times difference between one and the other. So this goes to answer another question that uh, has been posed recently. It was a couple of weeks ago one of the uh, subscribers asked why we don't publish any data and say how good the regulators are etc. This is quite simple. Uh, if you watch the other videos the regulator is just an opening and closing valve it's got one moving part really the piston and you obviously got the spring which moves as well I guess but there isn't really much to go wrong with them they're either working or they're not you know there's very little to go wrong uh, most of it is in the setup of the air gun itself uh, the alterations of the valves the springs and also then as you can see choosing the correct pellet for your rifle the one which is the most efficient so you've got to take into account the pellet weight the fit in the barrel, the length of your barrel and uh, the calibre of the, the rifle so as to get the best one. So say for instance that the, the, that question, going back to that question, so say we've got a, an air arms rifle for instance and we were getting 100 shots out of it using a particular pellet and we just said oh yes you can get 100 shots from ours, oh no trouble, yeah yeah 100 shots. 
but then you know you find the most accurate pellet for what you want to do or the weight because you're at shooting is giving you know and then you'll come back and say oh, you said i'd get 100 shots i'm not i'm only getting 72. so depending on where you are in the world and what your uh, power limit is if you're somewhere where it's only three foot pounds or you're somewhere where it's 30 foot pounds this will all affect the number of shots uh, dependent on the, the pellet weight and fit within the barrel so i hope you found this of some interest and i was actually quite surprised with uh, the range of uh, figures on power output that we got normally we try and stick to two or three different types of pellet for setting up and they all give out roughly the same sort of uh, a power reading so to go for quite a wide range here it was even you know interesting for us and i hope you've enjoyed this video thank you very much